uh, we are talking about auto mechanic and one of the key aspects of this event like is a networking aspects a networking uh, prospectors and you both are the key members of this event and you have the extensive experience in this space i would just want you to know how do you think that event help companies to build their partnerships and create new business opportunities I mean, it's, it's, it's this leap of faith, right? What Dr. Jawad did one day before the show started back in 2014 said, I want to be part of the show. I want to do this. And from there onwards, he's grown this much. Mm -hmm. um, I would love to see everyone to take that leap of faith and say that I have to be there in order to be part of the business. If I'm not there, I'm missing out and they should never miss out an opportunity. Mm. And at this time of the world, I mean, I know again, the technology again working in our favor and there's online and everything, but nothing beats face to face. So it's very important. Yeah, a very key factor which somebody goes there in event like, like this for a company, especially a company who wants to grow, is the gap assessment. Yeah. So if you're going from Middle East to European market, when you're going there as an exhibitor, even if you don't do well in that exhibition, but you you'll get a sense of soul searching you'll get a sense of gap assessment mm -hmm. and then always there is a next event or you can go back uh, you, you can go back to your processes you can go back to drawing board and you can always come up with uh, new ideas and you can right. always come up come up with this those uh, in fact at the moment uh, we carry about 26 OEM approvals mm -hmm. but it all started when we we realized the value of OEM approvals when we started going to the events like Auto Mechanica, where, the, where, we, where we understood the value what it brings to the table. Right. So, in terms of gap assessment, it's the key. I mean, as as you as you mentioned, that I mean, we can. There, I mean, if any good business story is always has a humble beginning. Beginning. Yeah. There's no <laughs> harm in starting in a small sure. way, and there's always. But what what's more important is what you take it out take out of that event what you learn from that and how you apply it to yourself mm -hmm. and try to find your own way around it that's yeah. that that's the key yeah. well dr jawad uh, as you are into this auto mechanica since 2014 and you start i i'm always mentioning that you start from a 9 square meter booth now what advice would you give to the newcomers who wanted to join auto mechanica as an exhibitor because I just wanted to know the story of that Dr. Jawad and or, or that Atlantic Greece and Lubricates in 2014 to the person who is going to join in 2024. Yeah. Simply That's just true. dive into it and you will find your way. Just take a leap of faith and then that's that's the best way. You I mean you you shouldn't die wondering. You should you should try yourself, should know your strengths and make a business plan and get into it. Let, let's talk about some other thing as well. Uh, we are we were talking about the networking opportunities and i just came to know one of your team member told me right. that you are also into the road shows yes and i just please share with our audience that what are road shows and how they are different with from uh, exhibitions yeah i mean obviously we visit a lot of, of other auto mechanicas around the world other competitor shows and we get to see clients and everything but going to a country mm -hmm. and seeing their manufacturing facilities, factories, how they are formed, their aftermarket, and uh, spending time with them face to face mm -hmm. gives you a whole lot of information that you cannot readily find online or through even a show. Mm -hmm. So we have started that back in 2015. We've okay. started going to different countries. And when I say different countries, we have now been almost, I mean, a little over 20 countries with more than 30 cities. Because with some countries, we did multiple cities. Oh. And again, we visited uh, factories, we had uh, presentations, we had presentations of manufacturers. I still remember when I was in Japan in 2015, that was one of the first roadshows, uh, Danzo. I invited Danzo to a presentation right before me and then I made the presentation because I didn't want it to become a, a sales pitch. Okay. Whereas when Danzo comes to the, you know, to the speaking uh, podium, mm -hmm. everyone listens. So this, it makes a huge difference. So again, uh, people are also very hospitable uh, wherever you go mm -hmm. and they, they make sure that they represent their own country's potential and what they already have done and what they're about to do. And it's actually impressive. And you know, when you see all those people from different parts of the world, you see how we, similar we are with similar ambitions, similar worries, similar fears. Uh, and how we actually go towards a potential all together. And if we are together, if we have an understanding and respect, the rest is history. 
if you if you consider the biggest takeaway out of it of of your uh, road shows what do you how would you say if you have to categorize in the order of three oh. what will your biggest takeaway out of i would it? probably put the let's say the the manufacturing ability or technology to the third i would say people number one all right the ambition or the, the emotions number two and then number three would be their manufacturing ability manufacturing. Uh, have you ever considered coming into the pakistan it's a world's fifth largest country by yes. population have you ever considered actually i've been to pakistan in uh, to lahore in 2014 okay, it's my home <laughs> exactly i visited the two associations okay. of course the importers association and exporters association right. and i also been to the pap show to the to the show itself mm -hmm. the automotive show as well so uh, there is a lot of potential in pakistan there's a very highly educated uh, population mm -hmm. with a very young population yeah it's 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 when I see Pakistan, I see it's similar to Turkey as well with the population number of people and everything. So there's a lot of similarities and mm -hmm. a lot of potential that hopefully that uh, we'll see Pakistan grow further as well. Yeah, we are we are waiting. We'd we'll love to see Auto we'll Mechanic see. exhibiting and uh, having a show in Pakistan. We can start off with the road show and we can, we'll love to see that. And but when, us, when will you start, we will uh, relate to this podcast as well that at this place we give you an idea how it started and how it's going <laughs> how it started and how it's going yes well everybody nowadays talking about the technology and um, I'm also curious about how technology works in automotive industry with uh, technological advancement and changing consumer preferences the automotive industry is experiencing a significant change nowadays giving the context how do you think what's your VN for the future of automotive industry? I think sometimes we think one step at a time, whereas the technology might be multiple steps at a time. Because for example, I mean, I still remember when this EV yeah. you know, uh, topic has been in discussion. Mm -hmm. They were saying first, it's, of course, it's internal combustion engine, then it'll be hybrid, then it'll be EV, then it'll be this. And we never realized that maybe it will become fuel cell, maybe it will become solar. Mm -hmm. all of a sudden and we don't know what's next kind of like the dvd into blu-ray no then there was nothing right <laughs> all of a sudden before it was they were saying that maybe there will be a smaller cd mm -hmm. no eventually it's just gone yeah. so similar to the transition that we are going through no one actually knows the future however of course it's evident that ev is the main invent what they call investment at the moment from almost every uh, manufacturer of cars and even the countries, yet I think it might be going a different direction as well. Oh, so Dr. Zor, what, what's your opinion about this? Well, while everybody's going, thinking about the future, even sometime, when I just get some time, I used to think on YouTube, search on YouTube that how will things happen after this and that. So if you talk about the autom automotive industry, what do you think that? See, we see coexistence uh, between uh, internal combustion engine, mm. hybrid technology and EVs. Okay. The analysis keep on changing. It's 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 nothing is final. But uh, but the analysis, if you talk about ten years back, was completely different. Mm -hmm. We were anticipating 2024, 2025 to be the inflection point where the EVs will take over the whole technology scene right. of things, and it will. Uh, and then then the uh, demand for uh, internal combustion engine is going to drop drastically. Yeah. But it hasn't worked out like that. So for now. Uh, as of now, I mean, things change every now and then, but uh, we look at coexistence. We see for at least for a decade the coexistence of internal combustion engines, hybrid technology, as well as EVs. And from there onward, only <laughs> God knows what's going to happen That's after right. that. I mean, as, as you mentioned, solar might take over. Hydrogen technology is exactly. also talk, talk, it's talk of the town. And uh, But I think it's going to coexist. Yeah. And uh, there is uh, there's, there, there is a discu discussion about autonomous vehicles as well, yes. mm. and we never know how uh, 5G, Internet yeah. of Things, artificial technology, automotive industries, when they all merge or when they all collaborate, what's yeah. going to come up? Yes. Mm. So it could be something very new and unex unexpected. Also, not the product itself, but the way people will buy things, right? Subscription model. Yeah. So now there are cars you can subscribe by the hour, obviously, by, by the minute. Mm. So, I mean, maybe our kids or the, their kids will never own a car. They will literally use sure. everything through an app mm. and then they will just go around the world, but without even owning something. Because owning means a lot of 
I mean, if you were to look at the carbon footprint, obviously automotive leaves a huge uh, yeah. carbon footprint. So sustainability is actually in the middle of everything. Yeah. And I think uh, the way innovation is, uh, let's say, encouraged by governments is due to sustainability mm -hmm. because they do want to make sure that uh, there's a responsible way of driving or the responsible way of uh, uh, usage of, of cars and, uh, and energy. So sustainability is actually in the heart of everything at the moment. That's great. So, so Dr. Joy, do you have any idea like how things will happen if we talk about reusable energy into this automotive industry? What they say, the charity starts from home. So we everybody yeah. has to take their yeah. own responsibility, Correct. work towards their own contribu contributions to the carbon footprint, mm -hmm. and, uh, and and then we, if we increase our spectrum to a broader aspect, we should understand the regulations and uh, our responsibilities, both morally as well as ethically, and try to implement them in our systems. Mm -hmm. So we have to... I mean, it's, we have left a very big void to cover now what we have created with the planet. So everybody has to pitch in with their own responsibilities. Uh, we understand all industries has got an impact on the environment and everybody has to contribute towards that to make things better for everybody else. Well, that's a very good yeah. public service message by Dr. Jawad that we have to contribute from our side first, then we will think about that how things will work as an individual, as a, as a collaborative, how things will work after that. Well, that's all the time for today. A uh, huge thank you to Mr. Ghazi and thank Dr. Jawad thank and you as so well much. the Auto Mechanica team uh, we have here in the studio as well. And uh, I'm really happy and very in, feeling very informative now that how this in discussion gave us a lot of knowledge, a lot of uh, education here. And I'm sure you people have also enjoyed the same way we enjoyed here in the studio. Uh, please keep tuning us, keep searching for us and uh, be there for the exploring uh, engagement and discussions. And before leaving, Dr. Mr. Ghazi, as you are the winner of our Atlantic trivia segment. So there's a yeah. gift for you <laughs> as well. You. It's a small gift from oh, our side. Very kind of you. Please, Hadi. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And Thank you. Dr. Joa, as you are also our participant. So this is and little gift for you as well. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Be sure to join us next time for the, such kind of uh, engaging discussion at The Atlantic Podcast. And to be aware of our new podcast, you, you have to subscribe our channel coming into the screen and press the bell icon as well. <laughs> well, uh, until then, keep exploring and stay curious. Thanks for watching. <laughs>